Thanks for watching the Daily Debate live Wednesdays with Tagreed Hussain here on Nile TV International. Uh, tonight, actually, we have a very interesting topic to talk about. We'll be talking about the impact of digital transformation in the field of finance and beyond. As we all know uh, that Nile TV International is our media ambassador, an extraordinary ambassador from Egypt, Egypt, the mother of the world and to the whole world. Nile TV is the bridge of communication that brings uh, the world to you, dear viewers. Tonight we'll uh, shed more light about the world stock markets, uh, the economy and the world of finance as well, and uh, from the eyes of a world financial expert. Tonight we'll be enjoying the privilege of interviewing one of Egypt's sons who has actually excelled abroad and made his name in the field of fintech and also in the field of stock market. And uh, we're really pleased to have with us uh, Mr. Saif Hafiz, uh, the global financial expert. Thank you so much for coming to Night TV tonight. Thank you very much for having me. It's a great pleasure. Our pleasure and honor tonight. Uh, together we'll be talking uh, about the global strategies in uh, the digital world. We'll be talking about uh, fintech, uh, the rapidly growing industry that definitely serves the interests of both the customers as well as the businesses in different and in multiple ways. Uh, Mr. Hafiz will be explaining to us how businesses can also use technology in order uh, to enhance uh, or automate the financial services and the impact of digital uh, transformation in the stock market. So uh, a very interesting topic uh, tonight. We'll be also talking about the results of the uh, COMESA uh, summit, a very important summit that was held at Egypt's new administrative capital uh, from the political as well as the economic points of view. But starting off with uh, even the theme of the COMESA yesterday said more and laid more emphasis about building resilience through uh, strategic digital uh, economic integration. So the whole world today is talking about uh, integrating digital transformation into the economy. Uh, how uh, this sense of digitization, uh, Mr. Hafez, uh, is transforming not only societies, but also uh, reshaping finances ar uh, around the whole world. Absolutely. Um, if I would recall, actually, um, in the financial world, in the old days, uh, people used to wake up in the morning, used to actually walk all the way to the banks, and uh, used to stand up in the lineup in order to talk to the teller and to withdraw money or do a transfer. Nowadays, with the fintech and all the new technology that's happening now, all you need to do is just to pick up your phone plug different numbers and and that's it you know you, you you got the transfer done so the the fintech is transforming the world upside down and that reminds me of a very interesting story that i want to talk about actually which is uh, if we do not actually go hand in hand with what's happening now with the financial world transforming we're going to lose a lot behind for example like a, a story that i would never forget in my life which a lot of us would know it's the, um, the Netflix and, Star and um, Blockbuster. Blockbuster, they had the biggest uh, stores for selling uh, and renting out all the movies and, and the videos and all that. Netflix, mm -hmm. at that time, in the year 2000, they wanted actually to sell them the idea and, and to, 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 to have them buy it over. And um, they actually took all the way to flying to them and to explain to them. And Blockbuster refused because they thought this is like crazy because Netflix asked for $50 million mm -hmm. to be bought at the time in the year 2000. Ten years down the line, look at what happened. What happened is Blockbuster actually, after the internet and all that happened, went bankrupt yeah. because they didn't mm -hmm. cope with the, uh, with the, with the global with, digital with the global transformation. Digitalization. Yeah. And Netflix nowadays is mm -hmm. worth $250 billion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, more of our audience would like to know more about uh, the terminology and you know in the in, in the world of economy and finance uh, the best thing about it is uh, simplifying the, those sense of terms and you are an expert in that and uh, uh, making uh, the world of finance easy and simple and at hand for people to understand and also to follow correct mm -hmm. yeah um, sometimes you know finance sounds a little bit complicated for people who are a little bit far away from finance. Yeah. People who are not familiar with the world of finance might find uh, even to the, to the level of credit card might be complicated for a lot of people. So it is super important to, in order to invest somewhere, for example, you need to understand what you're investing in. And it's super important to 
what I do, what I usually do, what I like to do is I have a YouTube channel that I, I, I sometimes show up and, and tell people how to uh, make things simplified so that they can understand to the core, to the people that are not familiar. And, and this is super important. Mm -hmm. uh, if we're going to talk about the, uh, from the eyes from an international economic expert, how do you see digitization today transforming lives of economists? We see the global digital innovation strategies being applied and this sense of digital transformation. And uh, we're always working yes. on the path of sustainability. We're yes. always aiming to achieve sustainable growth. Yep. Let yes. me tell you, mm -hmm. in the old days, a lot of things were product-centric, mm -hmm. meaning that if we get two remote controls, for example, uh, in the old days, people used to fabricate the remote control with the idea of the person who's fabricating it, meaning that they would put a lot of buttons on the remote control, and people, when they get to use it, they wouldn't really understand where to go. The new fintech and mm -hmm. the new idea is to be customer-centric, is to actually fabricate something that would be easy for people to use. And this is where fintech is going. This is where the finance world is going. Not only with the finance world, by the way, but a lot of other things. For example, a lot of companies are insurance companies. They are very soon, they're going to implement certain uh, uh, high-tech and artificial intelligence in your car to monitor your driving skills and, and to send it directly to the insurance company so that uh, your premium would change automatically. Maybe you don't have to pay a, a big premium because you're driving very good, or maybe you have to pay a big premium because you're driving very bad. So I would say that the fintech and the financial transformation of digitalization is something super important, and this is where we're going. Yes, definitely. Uh, well, as usual, Egypt is attracting the attention of the world with mega international uh, events, uh, and the, those international events are definitely in a class of their own. In addition to the Comesa Summit, we are making headlines for uh, tomorrow's uh, inauguration of the Rams Road in Luxor, that uh, World Open Air Museum Luxor in Egypt, the mother of the world, is going to send messages throughout uh, the whole world uh, actually tomorrow. And uh, with the global tourism industry, we are going to invite, of course, royals, experts uh, all over the world, cameras and uh, more than hundreds of stations uh, around the world will be covering this um, megastar uh, event. Uh, sure. Well, talking about uh, this sense of having uh, a look at the global tourism industry and uh, linking uh, the, the sense of uh, tourism to the economy and finance, they are very much interrelated. And surely those great events are going to market the mother of the world uh, abroad. Absolutely. How do you see uh, those events, the festivals, uh, uh, those uh, uh, interesting, you know, uh, events that make headlines like the inauguration of the Rams Road? Well, I have to tell you that um, Egypt in general is under the spotlight. I have to say that uh, from I've been living in Switzerland for more than 20 years and I've been working in the financial industry over there. And uh, I can tell you from a European perspective into Egypt that Egypt is classified as if not number one, then it is one of the first uh, in the emerging market mm -hmm. nowadays because of a lot of good things that's happening now. There's a lot of uh, political stability yes. in the country, in, the re in, 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 in Egypt. Um, and uh, there's a lot of uh, people who, are, who have their... Because let's, let's look at it that way. A lot of European countries has been already stable in their economy. Mm -hmm. And people who have money and they want to inject it somewhere to have a good return, they look into an emerging market. Where can an emerging market be promising? Mm -hmm. They look around and Egypt is number one in the area. And uh, I can see, of course, Egypt goes back to 7,000 years ago and tourism and pyramids and all that. Yeah. And absolutely going back to your point, when we talk about all these uh, um, yes. touristic events mm -hmm. will add even more to the, the fact that Egypt is a hot country in investing in the emerging yes, market. Yes, uh, here is a glimpse of uh, the beautiful story and the history-making event that we are going uh, to witness Thursday, which is the inauguration of the Rams Road uh, in Luxor. I had all the honor of shooting a promo uh, in Luxor in the pre-inauguration, and I can just tell you that uh, the mood uh, is fabulous, and uh, it's amazing, you know, to see 
uh, this glory uh, on the ground. W w definitely, um, Egypt, the mother of the world, invites yeah. visitors. Let's watch the promo and we'll be back. Excellent. An event that captures the hearts and minds of people all over the world. History making in Egypt and from Luxor. The inauguration of the Rams Road. Our pharaohs, the grand ancestors, never keep amazing the world at large. Special coverage on Nile TV International. Well, throughout Thursday here on ITV International, there will be a special coverage uh, on the Rams Road un until uh, the inauguration taking place at 7.30 uh, on Thursday night. We'll be bringing you uh, live what is happening from Luxor and that magnificent scene marketing Egypt globally and branding Egypt globally. Uh, to the whole world. Well, uh, talking tonight, technology and the economy and uh, following uh, the massive growth of the e-commerce, yes. uh, definitely worldwide. Yes. Uh, how do you see the traditional businesses Absolutely. Uh, uh, with the emergence of this, uh, this massive Correct. growth? Mm -hmm. One of the very interesting things that I would like to mention around here, for example, if we look at the traditional banks, when we come to fintech, fintech actually it comes from financial technology. That's like financial and technology got together. It's called fintech. In the old days, banks, as big institutions, used to use fintech as the back office. And then the front was the day-to-day -day transactions. Nowadays, the things are transforming the other way around. Fintech is the, is the platform that's facing the, the customers. And the, back t and the back office kind of transaction is going back. Let's put it that way. Let me give you an example. For example, in the old days, if you want to borrow money, how mm -hmm. would you borrow money? You go to the bank and you ask for money. Mm -hmm. Is it the bank's money? It's not the bank's money. It's the money that someone else had deposited into the bank. So the banks are making the intermediary. Now it, they are transforming into peer-to-peer, -peer, mm -hmm. the lender and the borrower interacting together. So yes. This is actually where um, fintech comes hand in hand. So fintech or financial technology in a, in a nutshell is is something that is facilitating the financial world for the day-to-day -day person. Let's think there are two billion people around the world that are not banked. Mm -hmm. They are not banked. Fintech can go to those people, yeah. can let them bank, can make them transfer money, can mm -hmm. make them save money. Mm -hmm. Well, the digital disruption has definitely changed the map of uh, the world uh, finance as, uh, at large. And uh, do you think global banks today um, are quite worried that they might be eaten by fintechs? That's an excellent question, by the way. That's a very good question. Uh, that is a threat that should not happen. Mm -hmm. Because I think fintech and banking should go hand in hand. Let's, let's put mm -hmm. our hands on one point. When did fintech emerge? It emerged in 2008, when the financial crisis happened. Banks were the first to innovate in fintech. Banks are the ones who created the credit card. And Barclays in 1967 is the first bank that created the ATM where you can withdraw cash. So banks were the leaders, but when 2008 happened, there were a lot of um, burden and compliance and banks were not able to innovate. Mm -hmm. Who did walk in at that point in time? Startups and fintech mm -hmm. took that opportunity when banks could not proceed and they did it that way. So point, your point is excellent. So are they, yes, of course, there are banks that are threatened, of course, mm -hmm. because fintech, they don't charge as much as banks. Yeah, where, where is the world of startups today leading us? I mean, uh, we're always hearing this term, uh, startups, and also uh, encouraging the youth to yes. have uh, their own small projects and, and to, to go ahead with startups. Correct. Uh, what do you think is the criteria of choice in that way? 
like where should they go yes. in startups? Mm -hmm. Startups is open to, uh, to, in my opinion, startups are, is, is something that's open to any person who is thinking of creating an idea. Mm -hmm. The only challenge that might have as a startup is the funding. Because a lot of people could come with ideas, but they don't have the money to proceed. From my information, Egypt is under the spotlight. Egypt had, there is a big fund as we speak that is created in Europe to fund the startups in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And that fund is huge, by the way, because Egypt is classified as number one when it comes to startups now, because yeah. the intelligence in Egypt here and the people that are looking forward and running and, and, and really... Uh, yeah, smart enough and a far-sighted vision, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's almost impossible to avoid uh, international exposures in today's globally interconnected economy. So uh, it's very important to know and to understand what the international stocks are and Correct. Uh, to follow up uh, this sense of uh, they're being inter intercorporated into trading. Correct. Um, how do you... Uh, see this and this sense of reflection on investing strategies, particularly in the era of digitization. Uh, you mean the stock market? Yes. Yes, um, absolutely. Nowadays, there are a lot of different platforms, without mentioning names around the world, that would facilitate for every person, you and I, that could walk in, open mm -hmm. an account in mm -hmm. 24 hours, super easy, copy of your passport, ID, residence, you have an account, you fund the account, you're up and running. You can start trading right away. So it's super easy. The dangerous part is because everybody wants to get rich fast. Mm -hmm. And everybody thinks that they, once you're in the stock market, you can be super rich. And, the, and that's why a lot of people, they lose a lot of money. So there is, should be a strategy, absolutely. Number one strategy is to understand that you have to put a stop loss. Mm -hmm. When you're trading in the stock market, you have to understand that there is a limit. Once that you go beyond that limit, you have to accept the loss. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they don't accept the loss. They let the loss running, and they, once they get a little bit of profit, they cut the profit, which mm -hmm. should be the other way around. Mm -hmm. You should let the profit run, and you should cut the loss. Yes. Well, uh, in light of the different uh, overviews of the world's largest and uh, the world's most important stock market uh, indices, well, uh, it's very important that uh, the whole world is talking today about building the market uh, resilience. Mm -hmm. uh, through the sense of digital transformation. Mm -hmm. So this has been uh, trendy. Correct. Uh, how can we like cope with this sense of uh, and pace of uh, digitization, which is actually very much rapid? Like in Egypt. Uh, in Egypt and in, in, the, in, in the whole world, I mean. Correct. Well, you know, the stock market is based on liquidity. Mm -hmm. So the more, people that, the more people that would trade, the more liquidity there will be. Stock market is, 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 a, is, a, is a market. Yeah. where people buy and sell. So if there are a lot of buyers and a lot of sellers, that means if I want to buy my product, I could sell it right away. Sorry, if I want to sell my product, I could sell it right away. If I want to buy a product, I could buy it right away. So it is based on the amount of people that are trading. So the more people are engaged in the stock market and the more people are able to code themselves in the stock market through digital platforms or through um, brokers, mm -hmm. the better it is for the whole economy. Let's say, for example, I'm a company. I go IPO. IPO, which is initial public offering, meaning I go to the, to the, um, to the stock market and I start trading. Yeah. If there are no buyers and sellers, mm -hmm. then, then it's worthless. Is it, trading an art, uh, in your opinion? Trading is psychology. It's psychology. It's psychology. In what way is it psychology? It is, it is psychology. Mm -hmm. um, I get angry because I'm losing, mm -hmm. so I keep on buying more. I, I, uh, I get passionate about a certain stock, <clears throat> sorry, so I buy it without even understanding it. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of psychology happening. It's all about psychology. It's human behavior. That's why you find the chart. The ch when there was a, a gentleman, I think a, a Japanese, who, who, who uh, invented the candlesticks, which are explaining how the trading happens and the pattern of trading. And that's why they created technical analysis, mm -hmm. which meaning that if it goes here, then the chances that it's going to go there is high, or the chance is going to be here is low. Why? Because of psychology, mm -hmm. basically. Yes. Um, are there, uh, let me say, coaches for, for this sense of psychology yeah. and for directing people on how can, uh, can they deal? 
Yeah, yeah. There, you know what? It's very interesting <laughs> because there's a lot of uh, uh, coaching. There's a lot of uh, education. There's Passion a also about this story. There's a lot of mm -hmm. absolutely, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it goes back. It goes back to the psychology of the person who's trading. Mm -hmm. No matter how many people had educated him, it goes back to him. How he, how his, how his character is. If he's an impatient person, mm -hmm. if he's a patient person, if if, if he is a person that listens to um, advisors, mm -hmm. you know. From from the eyes of a global financial expert. Uh, uh, what would you say, what sort of advice would you give to, to, to traders in trading in that respect? Absolutely, it's a good question. Actually, advice that I would give would be, if you're not an expert trader, and if you uh, see that you are unable to control yourself when it comes to trading, I would certainly advise that you put your money in a fund, a diversified fund, a fund that's managed by experts, that is diversified into different industries, different sectors, different um, uh, high risk, low risk, and leave it to the expert and watch it as it grows. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to trade, you have to understand that you're willing to take the loss. You have to know. If mm -hmm. you're walking in with 10,000 Egyptian pounds, for example, you have to accept that you're going to lose them. Mm -hmm. COVID-19, and uh, it posed actually a challenge to the whole world sure. uh, and also to financial markets and the field of economy. What were the lessons taught from uh, uh, trading during that difficult period, in your opinion? You know, uh, you'll be surprised. Mm -hmm. During COVID-19, the volume of trading had went up the sky, had skyrocketed during COVID-19. Guess why? People are staying home mm -hmm. and there is liquidity and uh, they work from home, they got bored, they go online, they started opening an account and they started trading. Banks, banks made a lot of money during mm -hmm. COVID yeah. because of trading commissions. Mm -hmm. They made a lot of profit yeah. and their stocks went up. Uh -huh. So uh, yeah, when it comes to trading, I would say, and even surprisingly, a lot of stocks went super much up. By the way, they classified them into two things, mm -hmm. the COVID stocks and the non-COVID stocks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, more than one theme actually tonight, we uh, are also talking building resilience through uh, strategic uh, digital economic uh, uh, transformation and integration. Uh, the COMESA summit that was held in Egypt uh, mainly aimed to encourage the COMESA's 21 member states to make greater use of the digital platforms to facilitate business and also to enhance uh, resilience against the economic disruption that has been caused by COVID-19. Let's watch this report and uh, we'll be back. As you can see, like digitization and digital transformation is overwhelming. Let's watch. President Abfateh Fattah sisi chaired on Tuesday the 21st summit of the Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, known as the COMESA, in the presence of heads of states and governments in the new administrative capital, the NAC. During the summit, President Sisi received the presidency of the COMESA from the president of Madagascar. In this regard, the president expressed his sincere thanks to the president of the Republic of Madagascar for his efforts and tangible achievements that have been made to deepen economic integration. In the summit, President Sisi stated that Egypt will spare no effort during its presidency of the grouping to build on what has been achieved with the aim of realizing the aspirations of the groups member states. In this regard, he called for concerted regional efforts to deepen integration, announcing that Egypt has developed a regional integration framework in line with the COMESA's medium-term strategic plan, 2021-2025. Under the theme Building Resilience Through Strategic Digital Economic Integration, the summit aimed to encourage COMESA's 21 member states to make greater use of digital platforms to facilitate business and enhance resilience against the economic disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. During the summit, the head of state underscored the necessity of introducing exemptions to customs as agreed within the framework of the AFCFTA. In this respect, he highlighted his proposal to set up a mechanism to review the trade policies of member states on a periodic basis to ensure the effective implementation of customs privileges. 
Within the framework of the summit, President Assisi launched an initiative for regional industrial integration, stating that an executive plan will be drawn up by member states as well as the General Secretariat to achieve this integration and increase productivity under the slogan Made in Comesa. The President added that Egypt will also work on ramping up economic integration in the infrastructure sectors, especially transportation, energy, communications and information technology for the aim of regional integration progress. A very important event that took place in Egypt. We're really honored to have with us over the phone uh, His Excellency Ambassador uh, Mohammed Al Arabi, Egypt's former uh, Foreign Minister. Your Excellency, thank you so much for talking to us live on Wednesday debate. The President exerts strenuous efforts to strengthen political as well as economic ties with the African countries and uh, we've seen uh, Egypt's presidency of the Comesa bearing into consideration that this is the second time since 2001 that Egypt has uh, occupied the chair. So how do you see uh, your Excellency Mr. Minister uh, this providing an opportunity to push forward uh, our integration plan Ambassador. Well, I think uh, we should also remind the, uh, the viewers that Egypt was instrumental you know, in the establishing of this uh, gathering, uh, which we call the Comesa. Uh, Egypt was, uh, let us say, the initiator for uh, this idea, and we worked very hard at the time in order to establish uh, this group. And I think it was a successful group so far. And uh, the main aim of this uh, group is to uh, eliminate you know, the barriers between the African countries and the east side of Africa in order to facilitate the uh, trade between uh, these countries and uh, the uh, exchange with, uh, for goods and even for people. I think we had a very uh, large scale of uh, targets and uh, maybe I can claim that we already uh, succeeded to uh, establish these targets and uh, accomplish the, uh, the main principles of the Comessa. Yeah. And, of course, we still have more ambitions. And uh, I think Comessa was also the nucleus for the free trade area for the whole continent. And uh, that was also an initi initiative by Egypt when Egypt was... Uh, chairman of the African Union, and uh, I think all these, uh, you know, efforts. It is a very important effort in order to create this kind of integration between the African countries, and I think this will play an important role for the welfare of the African people, which we needed, uh, you know, uh, for the future. And in the meantime, uh, it will create a sort of independence of the African countries that they can uh, produce their uh, goods and their merchandise and uh, this will of course will save their economy and it will help for the prosperity of the people yes definitely your excellency the president launched an initiative uh, that uh, you referred to concerning regional industrial integration we were uh, very happy uh, to view this initiative along uh, with the slogan made in Comesa. So uh, definitely this reflects on uh, Egypt's role uh, in Africa. How significant is our role uh, in Africa? Yeah, I think this is a very important you know, step if we will uh, reach uh, this uh, very high level you know, targets, uh, which is the uh, made in Comesa. I think this will be a great uh, success and a real leap in the African cooperation and it might even give you know a good message to the others to try to implement the same idea in different places uh, but of course we have to work you know on different uh, issues on that I think the main thing is how to facilitate the uh, transportation between the African countries because you know we don't have direct uh, let us say lines uh, um, sea or uh, air or uh, uh, roads and yes. I think uh, also the Egyptian initiative uh, Alexandria Cape Town uh, highway is one of the good things that we can they can facilitate you know this kind of trade between the African countries also the uh, we have many projects actually in Africa and Egypt is playing a pivotal role in order to uh, create uh, good infrastructure 
in Africa. And with this infrastructure, I think we can uh, uh, reach our goals. And uh, this may, might take some time, but I think we are in the right direction. And we need maybe some uh, more uh, efforts and help from the other countries, let us say the Western countries, to provide the, these projects with uh, some assistance. I think this might help. And uh, in the meantime, Egypt is always uh, paying more attention to uh, the strategic situation in Africa. I think the civil war and corruption and many other things. And uh, we are uh, doing our best in order to uh, raise the, uh, the uh, capabilities of the people of Africa uh, during, uh, our, let us say, using our also capabilities and uh, uh, from the institutions here in Egypt, in the universities, in, uh, even the military academies. I think we are doing a lot of good things for the African people. Yes, definitely. Your Excellency Ambassador uh, Mohammed Larabi, Egypt's former foreign minister, thank you so much for uh, your valuable uh, input, Your Excellency, as always. Well, uh, Mr. Hafiz, uh, we're still talking uh, about uh, trading and stock markets all over the world. Sure. And um, according to efficient market hypotheses, the stock prices are expected to adjust um, immediately without any sort of overreaction when new information is actually made available Correct. Uh, to uh, the public. So uh, the sense of preciseness and um, the sense of the effect of unanticipated incidents on the stock market, this is also another point that I guess uh, many ask you about. Yes, and uh, going back to your point, it goes back to what I said earlier, psychology. Because if people panic, they start selling. Mm -hmm. And when people see other people selling, they start also selling. Mm -hmm. And it's like a snowball effect. So yeah. at the end of the day, everyone is selling without even understanding why they're selling. And by the way, going back to fintech, there's a lot of algorithmic uh, um, softwares. You'd be surprised that are programmed in a certain way. If they would hear certain terminology in the news, mm -hmm. they would start selling. Mm -hmm. Meaning that, for example, if um, a blast in the White House or a bomb that exploded in the White House, for example, if that is on a breaking news, that comes on a breaking news. There are a lot of algorithms around the world mm -hmm. that controls a lot of stocks and controls a lot of trading that would automatically, without even consulting anyone, start dumping stocks. Mm -hmm. And that would, would go down. So that goes back to, uh, to the point of fear. Uh, one thing also that I would like to mention, which is, um, goes back to the, um, the stock market and what's happening nowadays with COVID as well. Yeah. Just a quick thing. There are a lot of companies that had not yet recovered, which are mainly the tourism sector, cruises, airlines, all mm -hmm. those companies, huge mm -hmm. companies like Lufthansa, Carnival, all mm -hmm. those big companies around the world. They have not yet recovered because of the coronavirus. So it is kind of an opportunity for people who want to buy and wait. A lot of people, there are day, day traders and there are people who would buy and wait. Mm -hmm. These are two different people completely. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you see the future of digital transformation and its effect on uh, the world of economy and finance? I mean, it's a world that is rapidly changing. Yes. Every day there is something new. Yes. In what way will it continue uh, affecting? I think it's like a train that mm -hmm. took off from a station. If mm -hmm. you don't jump in it, mm -hmm. you're and losing. keep pace it's, there's with, no way with what is happening. Yeah, uh -huh. there's no way back. Look, for example, I have my son who lives abroad. If I want to send him money, I, I'm using fintech myself. Mm -hmm. I just press and it's like a WhatsApp message. He gets it instantly. Mm -hmm. And the world is going that direction. So I think that fintech is going to help a lot of unbanked people, the two billion that I mentioned, mm -hmm. to be banked. And people need to connect. And let's say, for example, WeChat in China. WeChat, in WeChat itself, the application, you can book a doctor's appointment. You can buy insurance. You can actually buy a stock. You can send a message up to the point that you can actually date someone on the mm -hmm. same application, mm -hmm. which is WeChat. So just to tell you how the transformation is going, you know. Well, uh, investing uh, in international stocks is uh, investing in people, investing in governments where the foreign shares are actually located. Well, uh, we, we, we do have 
many events and many economic events happening and when it, it happens in a foreign company's home country definitely it might affect people's investment so it's reciprocal yeah yeah mm -hmm. sure sure mm -hmm. absolutely yes uh, talking about the future of uh, let me say uh, dealings and uh, uh, you, you talked a lot concerning the art of trading. Correct. And, uh, this is actually mainly also your, your speciality. How far will digitization uh, affect this sense of art of trading, in your opinion, in the future? Well, everybody is now looking for some kind of algorithm um, mm. around the world. They are talking about artificial intelligence. Artificial yeah. intelligence is this the is the future. Actually. The future. Absolutely. And it is going to affect our lives uh, Absolutely. throughout. Mm -hmm. To the point that artificial intelligence, Google is going to know you more than you know yourself, mm -hmm. which is very interesting because they see what you buy, they see what you like, they're going to present to you what you like to the point that maybe if you want to marry someone, you're going to ask Google if that person is good for me or not. So it reached that level. So when it comes to finances, artificial intelligence is going to study the trend of traders and get you an answer when to enter and when to exit. Mm -hmm. So artificial intelligence is definitely, so digitalization is the, there's, I mean now look at uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg sorry, and uh, Facebook and the, um, mm -hmm. the new metaverse that's coming out now. It's a completely different world. It's a, it's a, it's a world where you put your um, uh, VR, the virtual reality uh, uh, Google, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're in a different world completely and this is not going to stop. Mm -hmm. It's moving on and on. So yeah, moving on and on, and we're still facing many uh, challenges. Actually, uh, Europe is also facing many economic and financial challenges. Namely, Germany, for instance, if, if we take Germany as an example, is considering actually whether to implement another lockdown, mm. and um, maybe perhaps a partial lockdown. Correct. Um, also, Netherlands, the Netherlands, and, and more companies. Well, do you think that uh, this is going to lead uh, to more repercussions regarding uh, the European economy regarding the, and, and also the world economy uh, in pace? It is actually a very interesting question because uh, I think uh, the world has got used to, mm -hmm. is, is starting, is, the world is starting to live with, with, with the coronavirus, mm -hmm. with the virus itself. And they start adjust, adjust. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. People are starting to work from home. I mean, I just heard recently that people in Portugal, for example, are asking for that the, their employer would pay for the electricity bill and mm -hmm. would pay for their internet bill because they're working from home. Mm -hmm. And they're asking their employer not to contact them after 5 p.m. A lot of countries, Switzerland, for example, there are actually, there's a referendum that's going to happen recently, I think the 28th of this month, that they are against that you have to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. They don't want people to be obliged to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. But going back to your point, I think people are adjusting. People are adjusting completely with the world, the new world. And I don't think uh, the virus is going to, in my opinion, I don't know, in mm -hmm. my humble opinion, I don't think this is going to continue for long. The whole world... With the vaccination, with the of vaccination, course. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They're fighting mm -hmm. it. Yes. So it's a fight against the virus. Mm -hmm. And I think people, humans, are going to win. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. It, it may be tough to start investing actually in the stock market since um, the stock market jargon can almost sound like a foreign language for mm. uh, certain people. So those who are taking their first steps in investing, mm -hmm. um, many of course would like you know, to knock new doors Correct. and uh, uh, to know more about uh, new technicalities. With the, with the sense of technology that is there, with the sense of dig digitization happening mm -hmm. on solid grounds, how can you help them, those who are uh, young especially? Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, The sorry. youth, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. The youth, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, first thing that um, you would, it's super important that you understand what you are investing in. And if you do not understand it, do not invest in. If you're walking into a company, and you want to buy shares, you need to understand this fundamental of that company, how big it is, and where it has been and where it's going. Because, for example, you see a trend that's going up, and then you might buy it, and then it falls. And you see it falling, and then you buy it, and it might fall again. So it's super important to study the company and to walk baby steps, mm -hmm. and to accept the loss. And like mm -hmm. I said, to put a stop loss. Open a small account, put a small investment, and don't rush always think that tomorrow is a new day because mm. a lot of people think that I have to invest today and if I don't invest today I'm gonna lose and there's an it's called the 
the opportunity cost, you know. The there's, panic. The panic. There's mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. like, um, it's called the FOMO, the fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. The FOMO, like there's, there's a trend that's going up and I'm not following it. So I'm missing out, it's going uh, fast. No, do not panic. There's tomorrow and there's another day where you're going to still make money and more money. Yeah. So you have to slow down and you have to put a stop loss. Mm -hmm. and start with a small amount but take into consideration that you might lose that amount mm -hmm. so you need to understand expect that. expect mm -hmm. i mean if you don't understand how to lose you don't understand how to win when were the benefits actually outweigh the risks uh, while dealing um you this mean, is usually also a question when do the benefits overweigh the risks when investing in the stock markets well usually when you invest in the stock market um if you're making profit you want to also lock the trade mm. because you want to lock the profit. I had a lot of uh, clients in my previous uh, jobs that uh, I, I was managing a lot of, uh, and I still am, you know, managing uh, uh, funds for clients and mm -hmm. investment in Switzerland. And a lot of people would have their portfolio growing, mm -hmm. but they would never lock it and materialize the profit because let's say Apple stock, it's trading at 200. It could go to 250. And you're so happy, but it's on paper. Mm -hmm. It will next day if you don't lock it and sell it, it will go down to 180. Yeah. So materializing the profit. Yes. Uh, the key to building wealth is always developing good habits. And, Correct. Uh, out of, out of the eyes of the international uh, stock market uh, expert and in the digital age, how can we uh, make this digitalization or rely on digitization as an asset that is going to help us move uh, forward? In your opinion. Well, um, digitalization is going to help you in trading. Mm -hmm. It's going to help you in uh, investing in uh, different instruments. For example, you don't have to buy a stock because stock is a very volatile. It goes up and down very fast. In the, in, the, in the digitalization era, you could still buy a bond, which would yield some kind of a return, and you'll be very stable, meaning that digitalization, the idea of fintech and digitalization is I come to you. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to you. Every person will have access, which is the best thing ever. You would open your phone. You would turn on your phone and you open an application and you'll be able to buy a bond that otherwise you would never be able to buy it. You would need to go to the big institutions and open an account and be uh, eligible for that. So um, uh, digitalization is certainly coming to you. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Short break. Welcome back and talking about uh, your motto, we're talking about a very interesting motto that Correct. Uh, um, if applied c could definitely lead to fruitful results. Yes, yeah. um, I believe, uh, which goes hand in hand with the fintech, that the best customer service is self-service. If you think about it, when you go to, uh, let's say, any of those self-service restaurants, you are sure that you're getting what you want. You're taking your tray, you're going back to your uh, table, you're serving yourself. So there's no, sur there are no surprises. No one is angry, you're not angry, you're not angry at the waiter, everything is fantastic. The same thing with FinTech, it's the best customer service is self-service. I'm getting you the phone so that you can turn on the phone and you can transfer yourself the money to someone else. Mm -hmm. You don't need to call the bank and where's my swift copy, why the, the transfer didn't happen, and, and you need to go to the bank and, and, and go park your car and talk to the person and go to stay and, uh, and meet a guy who already is burdened by his work and already mm -hmm. uncomfortable. So, mm -hmm. and, and that goes back to the fintech uh, um, point. Yes, uh, talking uh, also globally, uh, what is trendy uh, nowadays uh, in the world of finance? And um, in what way is uh, this sense of digitization changing pace, in your opinion? Yes. Um, what is uh, trendy right now is uh, crowdfunding, mm -hmm. which is super important. Let's say I What come do we mean by crowdfunding? Crowdfunding, mm -hmm. good question. Crowdfunding mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. I come with an idea and I don't have even it's just an idea. Mm -hmm. I have nothing and I don't have money. So I create something called a crowdfunding meaning that I present my idea and I want to attract a lot of fund from other people that are going to support my idea so that my idea will see the light. And that is crowdfunding. That is super famous around the world now. And before the internet and the era of, uh, of 
of communication, which I call it the fourth revolution around the world. We never had something like that. Yeah, we'll be waiting for more because our world is actually very much rapidly uh, uh, changing and uh, <clears throat> we talked tonight about the future uh, of transactions of the stock markets and also about how the world has gone vis-a-vis -vis, uh, digital transformation and the world of finance. I thank very much my uh, dear guest Mr. Saif Hafez, uh, the global financial expert, for coming to the debate live tonight. Thank you so much Mr. Thank Hafez. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, my pleasure. And uh, next, uh, next, next time, uh, another episode, another uh, team working uh, the next day, tomorrow, and uh, wait for us for uh, the striking headline, Egypt making history tomorrow with the inauguration of the Rams Road. I'm Taghreed Hussain. Many thanks for watching.